Welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to upcycle your old shoes. So these were some scabby old shoes that I had. They're only cheapy Primark ones I've had for years. I stopped wearing them because they were so scuffed and gross. Um, and I found a fantastic hack uh, how to actually upcycle them using your favourite material, obviously. Mine's Disney, but you can use any material. Uh, some people have actually used um, oh, their old wedding dress, children's clothes, if you know the sentimental things, you know. Likewise, you can make them into cushions, things like that. But for me, it was a case of upcycling the shoes. And when we go on the Disney cruise, it means we can wear these on formal night. And I know that nobody will be wearing the same as me because I made them. So here we go. Okay, so these are the things you need. I've got some. Uh, old shoes that are all scuffed up uh, but they still fit actually these kind of these are not real leather these are like fake pleather but these are great because the glue doesn't soak into the material so you can cover them it's important around these stitch lines cut your material nicely because actually if you don't make a neat line it, it kind of ruins it it looks like a toddler's just thrown up craft material over your shoes nobody wants that so these are the ones I'm going to do today I'm going to do those another day and uh, these are for my son, he wanted them exactly the same as my heels, except for not heels. So I'm going to cut up pieces of old bunting that you know I no longer need, um, bits of material that I like, that he likes. Um, that's why I always keep, whenever I do craft, I keep all the scraps, uh, because you can always use them for something. You need uh, an old roasting tin or a baking tin or just something that's solid with high sides. I put a bin bag inside it so when you finish your craft you can just turn it inside out, chuck it away, happy days. And this is the solution you need. So this is a wood, hang on a minute, I'll stop a minute, that's making a bit of noise, thank you. Um, what you need is a wood PVA, it's super important that it's wood PVA. If you use like um, a craft PVA, that is that's simply not strong enough. So you use a wood PVA and you do two parts wood PVA glue to one part water that's kind of what I find then once you've um, stuck the material on you let them dry for a couple of days and then you can actually go over it with either a clear polish or I actually use this solution again over it again they're not for hiking you're not going to be going through puddles in them they're not going to offer masses of protection um, but they look cool and actually considering you're only going to throw your old shoes away you know you might get another couple of months out of them and it's fun to do so here we go so this is the fun bit, oh, I love it, I could do this all day. So I normally just do one at a time, stick it in your baking pan, it's quite random isn't it, I know, and we're going to make sure that we don't cover any of the stitching at the bottom, any of the sole, and we're going to eventually cut in around here just to keep it looking tidy, but for now we're just going to concentrate on this front because that's the easiest bit and you don't have to be too accurate. So you get your solution, I'm going to try and do this one handed just because I've got no one to help me video. So you get your solution on your brush, it's really super wet and it doesn't matter if you get uh, the glue solution on the um, bits that you're not covering because it dries clear. Um, you need to make sure it dries clear actually because you can buy some PVAs that dry white which would ruin it. So then you've got, I've got loads of scrappy bits, loads of scrap, let's grab a bit over here and obviously my son is just like me and he loves the main man so we're going to go in straight away if you notice if you use a pinking shear to cut your material it actually means that you can get a really funky edge without really making any effort you can also crease it like this um, because as it dries out the material stretches slightly anyway and not to mention the fact that you can cover it with another piece of material. So this really is a proper, easy craft. You don't have to be clever or patient at all. Then you cover that material, literally cover it so it's absolutely soaked. Again, once the material is soaked, you can see those creases get pressed down. Any gaps um, get kind of hidden. So it's, it's, it's really not super difficult. Um, another trick is to, if you've got lots of different patterns like I have, don't put the same pattern together, it looks a bit shoddy. So for example now, I'll go in over those creases with something completely different. And 
again, soak that material, particularly those edges. Soak, 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 soak. It's again, not hard at all. And if you like craft, this is, for me, this is such a fun thing to do. And in the end, you get a pair of shoes that you'd be amazed the amount of people saying, oh my God, they must have cost a fortune, or where did you get those from? Literally, because they're different to anything else you've ever seen. And so you feel kind of good because they've literally cost you nothing and you've had fun doing it. Well, I have fun doing it, yeah. Okay, so you just carry on like that and I'll catch up with you and show you the rest when I'm a bit closer to the edge. Okay, so here is what it was like before. Uh, it's a bit tatty, but still really usable, so it'd be a shame to get rid of them. And this is what we're like midway through. So obviously we're still in our in our roasting tin with our um, bin bag. So obviously you can still see there's wet glue everywhere. So there's white patches. There won't be white, for example, around here. That dries completely clear. Well, that will dry clear. Round the edges, a good a good um, trick. If you can't be bothered, and if you're one of these people who's got endless patience, you can fold the material over. You can glue it so it looks all lovely and seamed. And uh, do you know what? My life's too short for that kind of shenanigans. So I use a pink and shear, and uh, because I use a pink and shear on all the material I cut, it just kind of adds to it. I may actually. Um, in the pound shop you can get, um, I'm sure you can get it at other shops too, like a 3D um, gel glue. And I have used that to actually in the past, you know, put little dots or something, or, you know, on this case I might actually put Mickey Mouse in, in writing. If you've got stretchy boots like this, you, you can't um, ever go over these because this glue hardens pretty tough. So although it's got a little bit of give for your feet to move, if you went over that, I mean, it would just, you wouldn't be able to put them on. Um, so yeah, so I'll, I'll put on a photograph when they're completely dry and finished. But yeah, that's how easy it is. It's taken me, I don't know, 20 minutes to do this one. So 40 minutes to do two. Oh, also another trick when you're doing the back, don't cover the back stem. I'll just wipe that glue off. Just because if you cover the back stem and you cover the stitching, it kind of looks like, oh, I missed a patch there. That's good. I'm glad I've done. Yeah, it just means it looks... Uh...